from the Fans Talk podcast family. This is Fans Talk Fantasy Booking, recorded Wednesday, November 25th, 2015. I would like to welcome my host, my co-host, I should say, my guest. I don't know how to say this right, but he is the host of basically everything but a couple of shows. A couple of new shows, Suburban Mysteries and Fans uh, Talk Feelings. Uh, we have the one and only Garvin. Say hello, Garvin. Hello, ladies. And John, oh, I, I feel welcomed. This is nice. <laughs> uh, all right, so this show um, obviously can't really happen without your support, which we are getting a great amount of support. Um, to get access to this early content, uh, jump on fanstalkpodcast.com, jump through the links um, through to Patreon, pledge it a little as one dollar, and you'll be, have access to a heap more content and early access as well if you're aching to get to some stuff which sometimes happens with me when I'm out working and I need a fix of something to listen to while I drive along. This episode today uh, we're going to we were going to look at Fastlane 2016 but after last episode we I was kind of left stumped we we did Royal Rumble Seth Rollins wasn't injured and the world was going along as per normal. At the moment, I have no idea what's going to happen, and it's very exciting, but also very scary, because the roster's pretty thin, don't you think, Arvin? Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of, you know, we're we're in an odd spot. Uh, we we talked about this briefly in um, on a recent episode of Fans Talk Pro Wrestling, just, just the idea that, you know, if you look at the seven last uh, Survivor Series the main events, like not a single competitor in those main events are actively competing uh, at this year's Survivor Series. So whether that's injuries or time off or, you know, The Rock, um, there is it's we're in this like weird flux period where anyone could be, you know, put in that spot at this point, especially because yeah. of injuries. Yeah, the injuries are crazy. And you got to think that they're going to be calling a veteran back to put an influence in there as well. I, I can't think of any other way they're going to get out of it nicely. Um, it's you, you, There's only so much reins that can be forced upon the people. I know he's over and people still cheer or boo him, but I still think there's ways to go. And it just, it's scary because, you know, it's, I don't know how to predict fast lane. So, you know, guys, I'd love to hear your suggestions. Um, if you do pledge to Patreon, you do get access to our Slack community, which is a really great place for live chats. We had a pretty decent live chat going on for Survivor Series. Um, and yeah, so we're going to skip fast lane. I, I just can't do it. Um, and we're going to move on to a really cool topic that I think this is going to encourage us to have a decent debate about this anyway. We're going to look for our monthly five. We're looking at stars needing a push in 2016. So looking at what we've seen this year, stars that have developed, coming from NXT as well, and where do you see and what push could they get and what how far could they get? Yeah, um, and, and, and let me interject right here because you said, you know, they need to have like a veteran kind of step up, but I hope by veteran you don't mean a part-timer. Like I, oh, yeah. I hope no, you mean I totally mean who... a part timer. Okay, I totally mean that, and that's the scary part. I'm um, disappointed in that uh, that realization that you're making for yourself. But think think about it. Like the boys had a veteran have a slight influence. I don't see Taker coming back, if at all, until WrestleMania. If he comes back, then and anyway. But at this point, you would think he would. Well, um, but I mean, like the only part timer that I'm totally confident in or at least one in, is Lesnar. And he's not booked to come back until the 11th of January. Yeah, but still, I mean, that he's he's the only guy that I would give the ball to, you know, to run with. I wouldn't want, you know, Stone Cold to come back for one match or Rock to come back for two months. You know, that's not what we want. Undertaker is old. Uh, Sting is old. We don't need veterans to come back just to get you know, uh, a payday. Oh, and I agree. I just don't see them doing anything else. What has Vince always done? He's always looked back. Well, but sure. But that's not, that's obviously failing. If you look at how, like the, how the ratings have trended as of late, uh, sure, you know, sure. I, there's plenty of guys on the roster that can do well. And I know it's, it's been uh, this argument as of late, like, 
that no one is taking the ball and running running with it. But honestly, like you've got guys on TV who can do great things if you just allow them that opportunity to do it. New Day is a perfect example of that. If they would just be that, you know, lax and allow everyone to be able to contribute the the, the same amount of time, uh, I think there's a lot of there's a lot of guys currently on the roster that that can that can pull it off. Oh, I I, I totally agree. I just judging by trend, I can't see them recovering well. Like Sheamus is something they had to address and it was very convenient for them because I don't think if Rollins was injured, he wasn't going to win his cash in. There was no need for him to. So you you got to go, okay, so if Sheamus loses at TLC, which I'm thinking he would, you then move on to Royal Rumble and have, because you want your baby face chasing the title going into Mania, so you'd have him lose the title, get screwed by a heel, which could be Lesnar. I, I don't know. It, it's it's so hard to predict, but I think The Rock will come back. I think The Rock is the guy that they've been talking about for years. That it'll be Rock versus Brock at thirty two. Um, yeah, finally, I, 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 finally, he'll come home again for a couple. Months, I will never. Maybe. <laughs> I will never leave you <laughs> for four months, and then I'll leave, and then I'll come back and smash Bo Dallas or give the worst rub in history at a Royal Rumble to. Roman Reigns. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I I think The Rock will be coming back because I don't think... Like Stone Cold, unless he's just being the ultimate troll and saying, no, I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it, and then he does. But I don't see it happening. If anyone, it's The Rock because he's in still absolutely ridiculous shape. So, you know. It'd be cool to see him for nostalgia, but it wouldn't help the, the constant product either. So... Um, yeah, all right. Let's 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 get into this. The stars needing the push, which basically everyone needs a push right now. It's uh, it's hard times. It's hard times. And it, it it's, it's very interesting, I think, counting down who we're going to rate, um, who needs the push. So let's get it started. Number five, Garvin. Who have you got and why? Well, okay. So <clears throat> let me just start off by saying, like, you didn't necessarily give me, like, any rules that I had to follow is what the top five was. So Mm -hmm. I didn't know if I should dedicate time to just the current WWE guys that need that push up, or if I should concentrate on NXT call-ups that should, that should come up uh, to, you know, be pushed. Yeah, look, I I, I, I did a bit of a hybrid. Or there's also the third, which is, those who are receiving a push that need to continue to be pushed. So I'm going with all of the above. So I may may or may not have made three different lists. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I made one list and it's basically a hybrid of all three. I kept it within the WWE family, so NXT included, okay. call ups included. Um for example, if a call up was made to someone in NXT and the push they would need in WWE to be big and the way they would come into it. For example, you look at how Neville came in versus how Kevin Owens came in. Totally different. Big push, big rub onto Owens. Neville's kind of just there and he's not really going anywhere. Yeah. So I had a hybrid of all of those three. Mm. So are you able to move those three lists into one Merge in that? some way. I, I mean, it's it's going to be hard because there are <laughs> technically 15 people there. Plus, I have oh, wow. my honorary mentions list. <laughs> oh, yeah. The honorary mentions. You get three. That That is the law because okay. if we had any more than that, it would be basically a top <laughs> ten. So um, let's just keep it with three honorable mentions. Um, Man, I'm going to have to reorganize all of this. Well, let's let's talk about I mean, before we get into the full list, let, let, let's talk yeah. about guys that need to continue to have that push that they're currently receiving in 2016. Okay. Um, it, you, the thing I look at when you say that is who's being protected and who's not being protected. So you would say Kevin Owens mm-hmm. is very much being protected 
and I think they kind of are in a little bit of damage control with their champions. They don't want to lose any more to injury. So um, I think both champions, US title and the Intercontinental title, will both be very much protected and continue that push. Uh, and I hope so. I I but in saying that, I want Kevin Owens to get rid of the Intercontinental title and go for the big one. Yeah, no, but I, that's <laughs> that that's the note I made as well. I, I definitely want to see Owens pushed up to the World Heavyweight Championship. I just don't see how they're going to do it with the way they've just made everything with this whole three people faction slash authority going on. Yeah, um, I don't see how Owens can get himself into that. Um, I hope he does. I hope they somehow ride him in. There's still, what, four months until WrestleMania? There's time. Plenty of time. Yeah. And, you um, know, outside of Owens, I mean, you also have to consider Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins, when he comes back and is healthy, you know, he has to also be pushed in the World Heavyweight Championship race. Yeah, and I think he'll be the biggest baby face they've been needing. He'll be the reins that they've been wanting, you know, just because he'll come back. I don't see him coming back as a heel. I see him coming back as being wearing the white trunks or the white pants or whatever you want to call them, tights. There we go. Then let's go with tights. Um, he'll come back with that and he'll triumph. Yeah. It would be huge because people respected his in-ring work. And as we've I talked with Nick, and I think with you as well, like his whole moveset is babyface. Like the, the frog splashes, the big stuff. It's perfect for being a babyface. Yeah. So. Well, and, you know, it's also difficult like when... I mean, the best heels are the ones that use logic to make yeah. their decisions. So Kevin Owens, you know, obviously the higher in the totem pole the title is, the more money yeah. he can take home and take care of his family and take care of his kid. Uh, Seth Rollins, you know, doing what was necessary to put himself in a position to do something similar. Um, but also, you know, we also have to include Roman Reigns in that list just because, you know, from a consistency standpoint, if WWE stops pushing uh, Roman Reigns at this rate, uh, that's that's bad. That's, uh, that's a bad thing as far as consistency goes. Like, we almost need yeah. to have Roman Reigns in that top title race. Yeah, I think you do. I think by now they've they've sort of gone past the point of no return. They have to commit to him. Mm-hmm. Um, as much as I would like to see them do a Ryback to him and put him in a spot with Heath Slater, um, you know, I, I think they need to repackage him and keep the push going. I think it's the only way for Reigns to survive through this whole thing by the time that Rollins comes back because yeah. Rollins will just drown him out completely. So... I think a whole repackage for Roman Reigns would be perfect. Um, get rid of the whole Shield gimmick, the Shield style music. Give him a whole new thing with the same sort of principles, same finish, same move set, but just give him something different. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I um, agree with that as well. Just, I, I think that way you keep him fresh and people will like the change, but they have to make him super cool. Mm-hmm. That's the hard part. And I guess if he's selling merch, which I'm assuming he would be, otherwise he wouldn't be continuing the push. Yeah. Um, you know, they got to be able to sell it in a different way. Well, and, uh, and, and just look at, you know, what audience it seems like WWE is, is pursuing at this point. It's kids and women. And that's why we have John Cena where he is. That's why we have Randy Orton where he is. And Roman Reigns fits right into that mold. Yeah, look, he's good for the kids and for the girls. You know, the girls like to have a good perv. Sorry to be sexist, but I like looking at the divas. There we go, we're even. Um, You know, like, get the guy's shirt off. He's huge, Yeah, you know? As simple as that. Maybe it's just that. Take off the vest and you might have a big influence, you know? Could just be as simple as that and stop, like, maybe come from a different aisle in the crowd in an arena, which I think it ruins his entrance. I think it gets rid of the drama from coming down through the crowd every time. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't make sense at this point because the shield not coming down the ramp, I mean, that made sense because they were kind of like those outsiders, those those guys that were not necessarily a part of the roster they were like you know infiltrators and for Roman to retain that part but not have 
you know, the entire backing of the crowd. It's it's kind of weird. I mean, like, think of, like, you know, compare him to Sandman. Sandman came down oh, to the yeah. crowd, but the crowd fucking loved Sandman just because yeah. he was, like, your everyday man. And, uh, you know, Roman is not that. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> and, you know, it would make it so much cooler if he was the baby face of the people, if he actually could talk with some conviction. He just... Like, there was one line he said this week which just drove me nuts, and it just proved that he was just not really in in the zone. He was, sup, Nashville? <laughs> that was a, I was sitting there going, really? <laughs> Come yeah. on. Like, So, yeah, I think keep him pushed, and I would love to see um, getting Neville and Kalisto um, continuing their push, because Kalisto I don't think has lost in a while. Well... Uh, I will say that I do have Neville in my honorary mentions for the U.S. Championship title race. I think you know putting Neville in that in that type of position um, would would be good. Yeah. Same with Ambrose. I, I feel really sorry for the guy. He always gets put in this position where he gets protected, but he never gets the title. He he he's so much more over than Reigns is, um, but I think Ambrose needs to be keep getting pushed. Yeah, I mean, there's um, there's definitely a um, you know a difference between the general you know IWC or the the male crowd who is totally into Ambrose, but yeah, the the the, the kids and uh, the female and where. WWE seems to want to put all their money is towards Reigns. So it, it, it is an interesting concept. Uh, you know, I really... It's it's hard to compare this to, you know, say, the, the, the Attitude Era. I mean, maybe you had some differentiating opinions between Stone Cold and The Rock. Uh, but Ambrose definitely fits more aligned with, you know, the Stone Cold crowd. Yeah, for sure. And almost the, the Mankind crowd as well, because he's a bit the whole lunatic fringe thing. I don't know. We will see. Um, it's going to be a really interesting next year. You've got so many guys out. And I was going to say Cesaro. That was one I had there. Well, but... where? In your honorary <laughs> yeah. mentions? Yeah, yeah. Um, wow. For the US title. That's interesting. That's what I had. Interesting. Um, you know... Um... I th- I think he needs a belt just to build him. Completely agree. I completely agree. Um, as far as the must continue, New Day has to be there as well. Like, they need to continue to allow New Day the opportunity to, to continue to do what they've been doing, which is awesome stuff. Yeah, look, I think they've proven how amazing they are in an in a promo. I think they just need to start producing some unforgettable matches yeah. I think that's that's where they're needing maybe TLC will provide that if they do something cool with the Dudleys but it's looking like they're more against the Usos right now so maybe they can do a t- like a ladder match or something like that that'll be good um, because as much as I really do enjoy their promos it's going to get stale and it's going to happen very quickly and they're already heels but they're cool heels so they can't go babyface so they'd be stuck so they need just that something to add fuel to the fire. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's weird. Like, this whole heel-face dynamic has totally changed, it seems. Like, you know, we we look at what New Day is doing, and they're definitely doing, like, the heel tactics. But when it's, like, New Day versus the Dudleys, it's almost like a new school versus old school. Yeah. But can you see that they can't really go back to being purely good guys? That's the great thing about what they do in their promos, the new day. They they talk all happily and they get everyone involved and then they suddenly just flat jack you, but it's so funny, yeah. you love them. Yeah. You know? So you can't just suddenly make them good because people will be always waiting for the punchline. It won't happen. And I think the crowd would turn on that. Oh, I agree. So I agree. Y- you need something to keep them going. Yeah. Um, but if you I look would... at if you look at the reactions that they're getting currently, I mean, even at Survivor Series, the, the chants were New Day rocks. They weren't New Day sucks like it was mm. in the first, you know, four months of this. 
Yeah, yeah, that's true. I just, it's a great opportunity with the Dudleys and with the New Day to get some of the tag teams from NXT up because it seems like the NXT tag division is, there's so many of them. We're due for a decent call up because the Ascension didn't get the traction that they wanted. Um, And I don't know if the, the Ascension's gimmick will work in a big arena scale. The more and more I think about it, I don't think they will. Um, so, you know, you've got potential for some great tag teams to come up. The Hype Bros could go okay, um, and they could work with the Luchas quite well. <laughs> Even though I doubt Mojo Rowley. I just, I doubt him. Zack Ryder's great. He's always been well, great to me. But I don't know. I mean, I, I have a, I think I have a differing opinion. Like, as far as watching NXT as of late, and I know the likes of like McFoley has been complaining about the NXT crowd. They've been totally behind Mojo Raleigh. Not necessarily Zack Ryder, but Mojo Raleigh. And and for me, as a guy who backed Mojo or uh, backed Zack Ryder, you know, I'm almost uh disinterested in, in that part of it. Okay, no, no, no. I think the reason why the NXT crowd doesn't like Zack Ryder is because he's an, a main roster guy. And That's possible, yeah. I, I think because they're so critical at Full Sail, like you, you're supporting the new talent that's getting big and someone who's coming down to basically rub and to help Mojo Rolly get good, they're going to be against him. They're, not, they're going to go for the new guy. They're going to go for the underdog. Yeah. So you pull them up on the main roster, I guarantee you Zack Ryder will be cheered out of the the park over Raleigh for sure yeah but I mean so, uh, but like Zack Ryder what he, what he's doing is very similar to like Sin Cara I mean uh, you know Sin Cara well, well, wait Kalisto okay 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 Kalisto uh, I was gonna say. is totally like into like the lucha 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 thing and Sin Cara is like, yeah, okay, whatever. You know, that's that's how that's how he seems to to go. Zack Ryder is very similar, where it's Mojo Rally is totally hyped, and somehow Zack Ryder is like not as enthusiastic. So it's no one can be as crazy as Mojo Rally though. That's the thing. The guy's a nutcase. You know, you you. <laughs> I thought you were comparing botching, and I'm like, no, no, no. Sin Sin Cara botch face is the king of the botch. So, but no, in regards to being into the the gimmick, I I totally agree. Um, but I don't think anyone's going to be able to match that. So, it could be just a good platform to get them up there. Um, but I think it's going to be um, Enzo and Cass that'll do a call up first. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ha- have you been watching Breaking Ground? Yes. Okay, so, yes. I mean, uh, just to quickly touch on this, like, Zack Ryder <laughs> uh, basically said, like, this is, like, his last hope. You know, this is, like, I hope this gets over, otherwise I have no idea. <laughs> I have no yeah, idea. Yeah, but the thing, I, I don't understand how why he says that, because, you know, when he came in with the entourage folk, he was, you know, I know it was his hometown, but he still, people like to see him. They still like to woo, woo, woo. Yeah. So, I, I don't get... Maybe he's said something bad behind the scenes. Maybe it's a political thing. I don't know. But, yeah, I th- I think... Uh, yeah, I think you got to get the Vaude villains something. Um, there's a, there's some great guys there. Uh, but, yeah. All right. We, we need to do a five, a four, a three, a two, and a one. So we, we could end up talking for hours about this, I think. Uh, yeah, so. I mean, I didn't really have any other honorary men. Well, no, I, I mean, I have a ton of other on, honorary mentions. Uh, but I guess we could skip that because, you know, you're the host and that's what, you know, that's your yeah. job. Yeah, <laughs> I run the show here, Garvin. All right, you know, come in here. I host the main shows. Yeah, yeah, no, this is my show. Okay. So I'm going to give you a, a number five yeah. and I'm going to see if you can hybridize and prioritize to make your number five. All right. I'm going I'm to try to. No, no promises, but I'm going to try to. <laughs> and you can't make hybrid wrestlers that are two together. That doesn't. Damn it. That was one of my. Okay. <laughs> Unless they're a tag team. Tag teams are okay. Tag teams are acceptable. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So wait, wait, you want a number five for me? Oh, I'm waiting for your number five. Ah, Come I on, see. Man. You said you were going to give me I a number five. I prompted you. 
yeah. okay i misunderstood yeah. it's the language see, i think see, um, see look at this people my <laughs> listeners i'm so sorry we've got this guy who just he's so used to running the show he has no idea about what he's doing i i'm so sorry this is very embarrassing for him um all right garvin what did you have for your number five my number five is the wyatt family we need like we need WWE creative to not just build them up but also deliver on some of the promises that they're making so the Wyatt family is I mean they're basically glorified jobbers at this point they they build them up as like you know unstoppable forces and um, you know each individual is so dominant yet when they get into the big match especially Bray they fail so uh, that is something that definitely needs to be changed. And, and just to be clear, I mean, the topic that I suggested and the one that I'm following is the top five wrestlers or groups that need to be pushed for us to regain confidence in WWE creative. Yeah, so I agree. The Wyatt family definitely needs to be on that list. Definitely. Um, I actually had the Wyatt family in my number five as well. Um, it, it's really sad. They've got so much talent. Like Bray is sensational. And especially with the big guys behind him, they build the storylines well, even though they went a little bit over the top with the supernatural thing for Taker. But usually it was great. When he feuded with Cena, it was great. You know, when he's feuded with uh, Reigns, it's been great. It's been a little bit creepy, a little bit weird, but he makes it work. Whatever creative give him, he makes it work. And I think the family behind him, they've got a chance to make such a great impression and they could go so well. But yeah, it's like they're king of the jobbers right now and it's very sad. So yes, they need the push. They need it big. Give them the tag team titles or something. Yeah, I, um, I, I listed the tag team titles as well as Bray going after the IC. Yeah, yeah, that would work. And just have them surrounded in gold. And just gold that isn't that important in the grand scheme of things. But it would keep them really relevant. And it would give them a lot of TV time. Because after this Undertaker thing, I'm scared that their TV time will go down until another pay-per-view where they suddenly appear and then start a new storyline that they'll inevitably lose. I don't want that. I want them consistently on TV and stirring something up. That was what they were good at when they debuted and then it disappeared and then... Uh, no. Let's let's push them. All right. Number four, Gavin. What did you have? All right. This might confuse those who are only aware of WWE stuff and not necessarily TNA stuff. But I think number four has to be Bully Ray. We need we need to drop this whole Dudley Boys stick. Devon can go and do something else. He's not needed anymore. We need Bubba to transition to Bully Ray and what he was doing and the promos that he was cutting in TNA. We need that type of guy in WWE as far as a strong heel, as far as a strong character uh, with logic with uh, obvious motivation and and the dude is fantastic at telling a story both in and out of the ring so i I definitely want to see the dudley boys dropped i want to see bully ray in wwe okay i'm going to challenge you on this because look at the roster the main roster and think of how many heels there are so let's i'm going to go through a few we've got sheamus We've got Rusev, we've got King Barrett, we've got Kevin Owens, we've got uh, the New Day-ish. Um, you've got strong heels there. How many strong baby faces are there? But you're also talking about, you know, in the in in, in your little opening monologue thing, you said uh, that we needed some more veterans to come in, and I think Bully Ray would be that veteran to attach himself to a guy that isn't currently being pushed that could be pushed and help them develop. So you've got you've got not only a veteran but a strong enough character that can push a a guy that really hasn't been pushed. I mean, look at, you know, Dolph Ziggler if they give Dolph Ziggler the 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 chance as a face going up against Bully Ray is is good. Neville is another guy that would be good up against Bully Ray as far as your face heel yeah, dynamic. Okay. 
And just because yeah. he's been in the business for so long and he's so good at what he does, specifically as Bully Ray, I think I think it's okay to to add another heel to the mix. I just the only issue I have with it is I find him really similar to Kevin Owens. Like he's not as angry, like he's more angry I should say, but similar look and that's the only reason why I couldn't see it working. But I would be happy to be surprised because you made some valid points there. Yeah, and it, um, I mean, t- to me, I would put Bully Ray in the World Heavyweight Championship race. I mean, you've got Seth Rollins. Potentially, he would come back as a face. You've got Roman Reigns that's currently being pushed as a face. Um, Kevin Owens being moved up there, you know, is definitely uh, a heel. But, you know, that title race, I think, is really compelling with those four yeah. guys. Yeah, well, it's the the only issue WWE would have with that is they're going to have to invest in time of having not so great ratings in the time it'll take to get them all over and get some momentum building well, and good writing as well. They've gone through um, it for the last three, four years, so I don't think uh, they they have any issues <laughs> dealing with bad ratings. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you'd think USA if they get below the two million mark, that's when it'll get scary. Um, Because they've been right on the door of the hat. Um, So, as of late. So, we'll see, I guess. Um, All right, for my number four, I had Dolph Ziggler. Uh, The guy has been put in the worst storylines, especially the one with Rusev. And the the guy deserves so much more. Um, He was unbelievable in Survivor Series last year um, when Sting debuted. He was the best performance I've seen in him in ages. He's now kind of gone very Shawn Michael-ish and he could capitalize on that a lot more if he had the storyline. I think he deserves a push, especially because he's 37 or 36, one of the two. He, he's in the, that time where he's only got a few good lit years to go hard. Um, go now. Give him give him a US title shot. Give him a world title shot and even have him lose, but get him up there. Because he he's, can do it. He's a great worker. And the only issue he has sometimes is overselling. But there's worse things than overselling. Than well, overselling, I mean, so. if you're going to talk about uh, overselling, I mean, HBK is totally up in that in that area. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, to me, the overselling is, isn't the problem. It's, uh, you know, it's hard to continue to back a guy when the company is obviously not willing to back the guy. So uh, Dolph Ziggler didn't make any of my list, uh, whether it's honorary mentions or whatever. And I don't know if it's that I've fallen out of love with Dolph Ziggler because I think he could do some great things. Mm. But at the same time, uh, you know, what he's been given hasn't been great. Oh, it's been horrible. It's been beyond horrible. But question: Just before we continue, because I'm 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 really scared about this. Did Ryback get any of your lists? No. <laughs> yes. No, no, he didn't. <laughs> uh, but you know, as as far as Dolph Ziggler goes, you know, the thing is, is that you you gotta make the best out of what you have. And yes, the whole feud with Rusev, and whether it's Summer Rae or Lana or whatever. Um, it just wasn't interesting, and you've got to, you, you can't totally pit that on the the writers. You know, you also have to pit that on the people involved. And if he couldn't sell something that was bad, there's there's an issue. But that was beyond bad. I'm sorry, I've seen some bad storylines, and that was up there. The way it continued on, I think it's very hard for him to continue to be passionate about making the whole love triangle thing work because he's done it so many times. Well, sure. I mean, uh, uh, look at look look at Santino. Santino was constantly putting bad stuff, but he was still entertaining. But the, his in-ring work is sensational. And he's still, for whatever script he's given, I, I, I'm defending him on this. He still gave good matches. It was just the bloody love triangle that ruined it. Uh, I, I think... The guy needs something gritty, yeah. something good. No, it's it's, um, it's definitely a, a majority of the the issues is with how the story was written, for sure. Yeah, but yeah. I think he could have 
been able to keep my support if he, you know, at least tried. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's hard. It's so hard. I feel for the guy. He's. You can tell his passion's there, but maybe they don't like him doing his comedy. I don't know. I'm just throwing things out no there. No idea. Maybe he's just said something out the back that... Maybe he said that he didn't like Ryback, and that's what caused it all. I don't know. Yeah, because right. don't, don't you dare say anything bad about Ryback, or you get demoted. Well, you know, <laughs> or you get sued. Um, though, in saying that, just a side note, I watched Table for Three with the Daniel Bryan and Ryback and Dolph Ziggler. Favorite episode. And... Oh, man. <laughs> Daniel Bryan. I could imagine what he'd be like out the back. He would just be ribbing the hell out of him constantly <laughs> because he's not that smart and he can't keep up with it. And I'm just watching, like, you could tell how much fun Daniel Bryan was having just destroying <laughs> Ryback. It made my day. Yeah, it's just it's just great. his delivery. His timing is just, is just perfect. Yeah, and it shows the difference in the quality of the performer as well and their charisma where... I, I'm going with CM Punk on this one. He's just a meathead. Yeah. There's not much there. It's just muscle. Also, another interju- uh, interjection. Uh, is Daniel Bryan on any of your lists? Yes. Okay. Okay, that's all. That's all I wanted to know. But it, it's, it's, it was really hard. I thought about it. But I was told... Well, I wasn't told. I read that gold dust injury was exactly the same or very, very similar to Daniel Bryan's. So it gives me hope that he'll be back soon. Okay. So there we go. So moving on, let's go to number three. Okay, I'm still trying to merge my list. So bear with me. But number three, I'm going to go with an NXT call-up. And and there were quite a few that I had in, in my little top five here. But I'm going to go with Chad Gable and Jason Jordan. I think the way they work is so different than what we see right now in the tag team division. And I think that they could add a really nice piece to that. You know, not just wrestling ability, but, you know, also the, like the little cute backstage segments that they have together, um, I think, would make them uh, you know almost endearing to to the crowd and it's and and it's something different than than we've seen in in a long time oh man totally for those guys to jump on the main roster they don't have a niche gimmick like some of the other guys do like the vaude villains i think they would kind of struggle on the main roster um but for 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 those two fresh face great the the humor is you know it's not as it's it is still very different to what um, the new day are doing, and they can perform in the ring. I'd love to see a feud with those guys versus the new day. Yeah, it, that would be brilliant. Or even with the Lucha Dragons. Yeah, or I mean, really you could well. even throw the Usos in there too. I think they would they would produce some good matches there too. You know, yeah. uh, I mean, their their only downfall is that you can associate them in style with the world's greatest tag team. But at the same time, like the fans aren't, at least in NXT, they aren't as crucial with that. Um, yeah. So like they're not chanting like Angle or Goldberg like they are for Ryback. They're, <laughs> they're acknowledging that, yes, there are some similarities, but then they're using it to promote how awesome – Gable and Jason Jordan are, you know, so they are using Kurt Angle's theme song in their chants, but it is to promote these two. Yeah. Yeah. And look, in the end, any reaction is a good reaction. So it, it, apart from you can't wrestle, that's the one they don't really want to hear or you're Eva Marie and you can't get a word in because no one likes you. Um, and it was the bad, no one likes you, but yeah. Oh, that was funny. I couldn't stop laughing at that. Every single time she tried to talk, they got her. I would have loved to be in that crowd. I would have had so much fun. Um, yeah, for my number three, I did a call up as well. Um, and I think uh, for this guy, um, it's very much well overdue. Um, 
and he probably should have gone when Seth Rollins went out. And this is going to be very contradictory, but I'm saying Samoa Joe. Okay. Um, and I don't think as a heel was a good move, but either or, the, that veteran thing I was talking mm-hmm. about, the guy knows what he's doing. He can talk and he can work and he's got a presence that no one else does on the roster. Like Kevin Owens is totally different to him as well. Yeah. So yeah, and, uh, and I I'm I'm in agreement with you overall. I mean, as far as Samoa Joe, like if this was a top ten list, <laughs> Samoa Joe <laughs> would definitely be in that. Uh, he was in my yeah. NXT tiers that I would I would definitely call up. Uh, I could see Samoa Joe doing some great things in the IC title race, uh, maybe even World Heavyweight Championship race. Uh, but definitely, definitely I see to, to help build some credibility there. I think once this uh, Del Rio swagger thing blows over, which I think will happen fairly quickly, um, I think, you know, having him at the US title race would be great. I think him and Del Rio could pull off some great matches. Because um, when Del Rio wants to, he can do great work. And then you can tell when he really doesn't want to be there as well. He's very hot and cold. Yeah. Um, but having those two together, I think, would inspire some pretty good stuff and show some people up, I think, as well. So, yeah, Small Joe for my number three. All right, number two, the Nitty Gritty. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put Cesaro here at number two. I think, you know, the guy has a great look. He's got a great move set. He has the crowd backing. He's not necessarily great on the mic, but... That's not necessary. I mean, and it's also just a language barrier. Like, you're not going to get, like, intense uh, promos from a guy like Cesaro uh, in in the sense that everyone can, like, get behind him or to rally the crowd. But it's just what he does in the ring. Um, As soon as he gets back from his injury, they need to give him the ball. So I definitely want to see Cesaro in the IC title race. He's not on my list. Um, I know he was in your just, he was in your honorary mentions. I think. Yeah, yeah. Look, um, I think for Cesaro, that mic talking skills is going to be the thing that prevents him from ever being champ. Okay. From being the champ, um, I think that having him around the US title picture is great. Um, however, they love to go in, you know, for injuries and stuff like that, and he's had two now um in his short span um even though he's been working like a crazy person i i think yes a push is needed um but i think he's fairly made now as well um and hopefully he gets a title push but i think he'll just be a worker sad to say but i i think that's where he'll end up i you know i'm not i'm not totally objecting to all of that but at the same time like look at you know who who was pushed even you know despite the fact that they weren't necessarily great on the mic you've got um you've got you know if we if we look back to the 80s you had a guy like Yokozuna um you also had Chris Benoit was not great on the mic but it was what he did in the ring that told the best story and that's a story that a lot of uh, a lot of fans were were you know wanting you know we wanted a fierce guy in the ring and i think a guy like cesaro does that yeah yeah look i love his work in the ring um you know some of the stuff he was doing before he was injured and i i was hearing the other day that he was wrestling for 2 months with that injury 2 months I've done my shoulder in rugby and I went to the hospital immediately in agony. So <laughs> the guy's crazy. Speaking um, of that, and obviously- like speaking of uh, working on an injury, did you hear the story that just came up from Bret Hart that he like broke his wrist like in the early 90s maybe and just wrestled through it and is just now going through surgery to fix that? Okay, that's just stupid. <laughs> like, the guy's an idiot. <laughs> like, come on. How long does... It's nearly been... Yeah, no, the guy's crazy. Um, surely if you're getting pain out of it or if it's not moving the way you want it to, get it looked at. Get a scan. 
and I'm sure he has decent health care. Yeah. Well, he's in it's Canada, a... though. Are you being against Canadians? <laughs> I'm just saying that. No, I find that I find the rivalry between you guys very interesting. Well, so it, is, uh... I mean, wrestling with feelings. I've got an interview coming up uh, with a, a, a Canadian who who talks uh, somewhat critically towards the the healthcare system up there. But yeah, I mean, you know, the healthcare isn't necessarily provided by WWE. I mean, now now it sort of is. But they have the welfare. Uh, what is it? Like they've sent a lot of guys to rehab. I know that much. Um, WWE has to try and help them. Um, and I'm assuming for any injury that's happened when they're working for the company, it's covered. But anything outside of that, I'm assuming it's your own health care. Yeah. You would think. You would think. Um, which makes sense. Um, I don't know. I know in the States you need insurance. I don't know what Canada has. Um, for Australia, it's covered most of the time. So I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, guy's an idiot. It's almost been 20 years. Probably should look at stuff like that when you're He's hurt. a 4 out of I 10 you... human, but a 10 out of 10 wrestler. Yeah, the guy's pretty cold. <laughs> I've heard a lot of interviews lately with him, and he's a very cold and bitter man. Yeah, he speaks his mind, though. Yeah, I respect that completely, but he's clearly got a lot of anger he should probably let go of. Um, but yeah. All right, my number two, I had Daniel Bryan. Um, the guy doesn't even need to have great matches, but he needs to be pushed back into the spotlight for the sake of ratings. You have him back, you get an extra heap of viewers. You have him in his storyline where he can just yell yes at someone for two minutes every every Raw. You get money. And... He's, he did so well in what he basically the fans made happen and it showed the power of what the fans can actually make um, and can influence. So, yeah, get the guy back and it and it will be satisfying for the fans to get thrown a bone as well in that respect instead of having a Roman Reigns situation of things being forced down your throat. So, yeah, Daniel Bryan for my number two. Yeah, and I don't object with Daniel Bryan. I mean, I definitely want to see him do some great things. But um, I also respect, you know, WWE if if it's like a health thing that they don't necessarily yeah. want him to, to compete. But, I mean, like when the guy is like, hey, I'm healthy. I've been cleared by every doctor except for WWE's, um, you know. Do you think that's a work, though? I don't know. Maybe they're just waiting. I mean, it's possible, but, you know, there's also those rumors going around that maybe WWE is doing this so that they can take back control over WrestleMania. Yeah. So they're so they're going to keep them out until at least WrestleMania so that their plans go go forward. So do you think you'll see him the day after WrestleMania? Potentially. Do you think that's when do you think do you don't think it'll be the Rumble? Um, it's hard to tell. I mean, I mean, if you catch any Daniel Bryan's like latest interviews, I mean, he's he's obviously bitter that you know they're not allowing him to uh, to do anything. Yeah, I, I I hope for the Rumble, but only if he wins. If he doesn't win, he shouldn't be in it. Um, and if that's the case, wait till after WrestleMania. That's my theory. But we will see. We will see. Okay. Number one, the big one, the hybrid of three lists into one, Garvin. What do you have? Well, before we do that, <laughs> I, there's, there's some names here that I think uh, we should we should definitely, you know, maybe push into, you know, honorary mentions. So, uh, no, that comes at the end of the list. Oh, for real? We, we, do, we do the countdown, then we then go through a few names. It's my show. That's how oh. it works. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let me take off my host <laughs> hat for a second here. I guess. Um, it's all right. I'll probably be derailed as host. They'll vote me off the island. <laughs> now. Uh, <laughs> all right. My number one for me to regain confidence in the writing staff in 2016 is to call up. <laughs> Sorry, is to call up 
Adam Pierce, Sarah Del Rey, and Regal to take over writing so we can get some actually good and consistent stories going. Get out. No, that's it. That's my number one. Okay. All right. Fine. That's the strangest number one ever. <laughs> but I do. I, <laughs> it's, it's basically me saying I will never regain confidence in the those who are making decisions in, on Raw. We need someone else to come in and take over. And Adam Pierce, Sarah Del, Rey, Sarah Del Rey, Regal, they're all doing great things down in NXT. We need that kind of vision, that kind of uh, energy uh, on the main roster. I, the only thing I'd say is how would they cope with doing five hours of television versus one? Well, you would have to go down to two hours for Raw. I mean... Okay, that's not going to happen. It's just not. The, the, they've got a contract which has has them stuck. Well, you say that, but considering how many injuries they've they've had thus far since the three hour raw began, I mean, you you have to also look at the health and wellness of your your talent. You're 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 giving them more work than they can really do. This is the issue, though. It's like. You've got NXT as its own brand, but it's still declared as the de- developmental place. Why aren't they calling up people by the thousands if they need them? That's the whole point of it. Have a talent pool that you can dip at when you need to. And they haven't done it when it's been clearly necessary. No, it hasn't been completely necessary. I mean, there's plenty of guys on the roster, and I would I would have told you who those are, but I can't go into honorary mentions yet. But, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, but yeah, there's there's plenty of guys on the roster right now that are not g- being given a chance. You could even fucking throw uh, Ryback in that list too if you really want to. That aren't <laughs> given the consistent storytelling to be able to, you know, put something out there that's compelling. I, I get that, but you've got to think about okay, you do that, you give them all something compelling, and then who's going to do the worker matches? Get the new guys up. Get them in for squash matches. You don't see that anymore. You don't see some random no. that we haven't even seen But before. you've got, I mean, 50, 60 people on the main roster. Uh, there's plenty of guys there. You know, you can, easily, you can easily pass the torch to any of those guys and just see what they do. I mean, I felt like that's what really drove the, the Attitude Era was like new guys stepping up and doing cool things. Yeah, okay. All right, I'm going to respect your answer. I just thought I'd challenge Thank it. Thank you. Yes. All right, my number one is a person who is an actual current <laughs> wrestler. Um, he is heavily experienced and I think has the opportunity to do crazy things come WrestleMania, and I hope, to dear Lord, he gets debuted on the main roster soon. It is a call-up. Oh, okay. That's too funny. I thought for yeah. sure you were gonna uh, you were going to say John Cena. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he doesn't need to be pushed. The guy could go on the ring and have a sleep and people would still cheer for him or boo him and still get people to pay money to see him. No. Uh, my number one is Finn Balor. The guy is crazy over in NXT. He had the craziest reaction in Brooklyn. His entrance would, is basically the new Undertaker entrance. It's huge. It's awesome when he's in the demon mode. Um, the simple lifting your hands thing, which looks funny, but people get into it. His music's cool. Everything about him is cool, apart from when he sort of looks like a streaker and flashes his title at people at the moment. That's kind of weird. Um, But apart from that, the guy's made. He's insanely good in the ring. I think one of the best in the WWE company. Um, Get him up, get him big, get him in the title race straight away. Don't go to the US title, go straight for the, the big one. I think that'd be huge for him. Or have him versus the Wyatts, one of the two. I like how you totally skipped over the fact that he's terrible on the mic. I love him on the mic. The guy's good. Okay. Are you against Irish people? <laughs> okay, I've just discovered something here, people. Garvin doesn't like Canadians, and he doesn't like Irish people. I love Canadians. Irish people, okay. yeah, maybe. But, I mean... I'm going to quote a t-shirt at you that happened 
I think it was <laughs> last year or earlier this year. Rise above hate. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it, I, I, I'm feeling some negative feelings towards the Irish, even though they've got everything going for them at the moment. You've got the World Heavyweight Championship, Sheamus, the NXT Champion, Finn Bella, and Becky Lynch. Well, if you would Life have right allowed now. me to throw some honorary mentions <laughs> out there, you know, uh, you might have heard some love for the Irish. But, I mean, I, 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 I agree with you that, uh, I mean, his entrance is great. It's very Undertaker-esque in that it's, you know, sort of spiritual, sort of mythological. And, uh, you know, it just adds to the theatrics of wrestling. And I totally appreciate that. But what I don't appreciate is that is 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 that you know just him on the mic. I don't think tells the same story or carries the same energy and vibe that his entrance does. Oh, okay. Or his ring ability. Yeah. Who? This is this is pretty much reflecting the same thing. Look at Sheamus. The guy, I can't stand him on the mic. But in the ring, he's a good worker. Um, his entrance is bloody horrible. Um, could be a lot better, but that's just to do with his current package. Who do you rate over, Seamus or Finn Balor, then, in regards to mic ability? Oh, Seamus. I, I, I don't mind Seamus on the mic. I think Seamus is actually pretty good on the mic. It's just that he hasn't been... You know, given that consistent story that made sense, you know, it's it, I mean, it's your your money in the bank curse where the money in the bank winner loses a bunch of matches and it doesn't it doesn't actually make sense. Just like when he was king of the ring, you know, you could see how dominant he was and what good things that he could do in the ring if he had a good story behind him. And this whole partnership with Triple H. Perfect. Five years ago. <laughs> you know, now I think now that it's happening think, now, it's like, well, yeah, okay, but we're tired of Triple H at this point, and we're tired of the authority at this point. So it's hard to see the good that can come out of Sheamus partnering with the authority. If if the authority backed him when a, a lot of the crowd were ready for it, or even you put Sheamus, Barrett, and Rusev, or share it. Uh, Seamus Barrett and, and Regal together, like a lot of people were wanting when that whole uh, WWE 2K uh, thing was was revealed. Like that, that would have been awesome. That would have been awesome to see. But because they've waited so long to actually, you know, do something quality with Seamus, it, it's it's hard it's hard to back him. Yeah, um, the best thing they could do now is finally get rid of the Hawk gimmick. Now he's in the authority. Shave off his head. Get him in a suit. Well, do the corp- corporate shame. Definitely get him in a suit, but I don't think he has to change his hairstyle. At least get rid of the bloody beard. Oh ponytails. yeah, the beard thing is dumb, but you know the hairstyle, uh, whatever. I mean, Seth Rollins, I think worked with a hairstyle and with a suit. Yeah, yeah, but he's just got long hair with blonde streaks. It's a little bit different to having a mohawk. If in violent red, yeah, but Kane or Ginger, Kane had the, like the weird widow's peak thing, and it was okay. Yeah, but Kane could do anything. The guy was apparently burnt as a child. That's why he wore the mask, and then suddenly he got demasked, went crazy, and then he was fine without the mask. And then he turned into a nice guy. Then he had anger management, and yeah. He could do what he but wants. Kane is like a th- success story of science. I mean, he got his he, <laughs> he he regained his voice and like that's that's remarkable, man. <laughs> and we believed it because back then it wasn't entertainment. Oh gosh. Yeah, uh I think that yeah, get just shave off all his hair, give him a spray tan and shock people with it. See how they go with that instead of putting baby powder on him. I don't think he's that pale in real life. Is he that pale in real life? It's like they like roll him around in baby powder or something. No, um, it, I mean he is that pale in in real life. It's just that he, you know, to re- retain that look, he wears hoodies all day, 
Even when it's hot, he's not exposing his skin <laughs> to the sun. And he lives in a steel bubble yeah. where he hides from the sun. Yeah. That's living a gimmick, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, okay. All right, you get three honorable mentions now. Wow. Well, you tried to get more out. You've tried to get more out. I've seen your plan. I, you and... should... I, I'm going to post a picture <laughs> of my full list here. Uh, there are so many people here that I could throw into uh, um, honorary mentions. Uh, such as Emma, Nia Jax. I'd like them both to be called up uh, for the Divas division. Uh, Sasha Banks could easily, you know, be pushed. She's already got the support. Becky Lynch is another one that I would definitely throw there. Yep. So... That's sick. No, uh, th- those aren't necessarily <laughs> my, my top list, but I also throw Tamina <laughs> into uh, you know the Divas division and actually have her do credible things. I mean, just just think of that Divas division. You've got Paige, Charlotte, Becky Lynch, Sasha Banks, Nia Jax, and Emma. That's that's pretty awesome. I think the next step they need to take logically is the women's tag team titles. Or. Give them proper storylines that make sense and allow them all to fight for the title because they are here on the roster to fight for the top title, not to slap each other or fight about boys or, you know, all the bullshit that we've received over the last 10 years. True. Look, I think it's possible, but... I do see some reluctance for these longer matches for the Divas on the main roster, though. You know, it's not as over as we would we like to think it is. So, do you do you give them credible storylines but limit them to seven minute matches, or scrap storylines? Just say that they're fighting for the title, and allow them to wrestle within that constraints. And then you've got an epic match between Charlotte and Sasha Banks. You've got an epic match between Emma, Nia Jax. I mean, that's that's what's that's what's important. I mean, you don't necessarily need. I mean, look at Kevin Owens. He is fighting to be the top guy, and if he can't be the top champion, he'll be the second best champion, which is the IC title, because that feeds his family, because that allows him to raise his kid in, in a good situation. I, I, that's that's a perfect that's a perfect reality era, quote unquote, uh, story. And you could easily do the same thing with the Divas division. Yeah, yeah, okay, you got it. So was, you got three people. Well, I was just concentrating on the divas at that point, but I also <laughs> uh, see what he's doing. You guys is he's secretly getting out everyone in his list because he put all the effort in, and I understand. It. I appreciate the effort, but you have three names. That is all you have remaining, guys. Okay. This is hard. What are this they? is hard. <laughs> um, you know, it's it, it's hard because, you know, I would realistically change the landscape of all the different title races and give people opportunities that they haven't been given so far. So, you know, I really want to throw out a name like Bo Dallas in there. Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel going for the U.S. Okay. Championship. I think you know the U.S. title. Yeah. You want to push them to the middle title straight away. Wouldn't you put them in the Intercontinental? Straight away? <laughs> They've Kurt Axel was the Intercontinental Champion. I mean, he's got the legitimacy. He's got the credibility. And where has he been? He was injured, and then he's been off TV. Right. He has not been given he, he the credible He got a rub. Push. He got a rub from Paul Heyman. If you want to call it that. And the guy couldn't get it over. What else can he get? They can't shoot him to the moon. Well, the guys had so much of a push, and when he first came on, he was pushed to the absolute moon. He was wrestling CM Punk everywhere around the world on house shows, including Australia. That's what I saw. Saw them. He in. beat Triple H. I mean, the you know, as far as the Curtis Axel thing, there 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 were two things against him, at least from my perspective. One is Paul Heyman was also working with Brock Lesnar. So Brock Lesnar took precedence. It's the same thing that happened to Cesaro. You know, Brock Lesnar took yeah. precedence. 
Then CM Punk was also involved and who was the guy that everyone was backing. So, of course, whoever CM Punk is going after, the crowd would be against them because they were all backing CM Punk. Yeah, but you can be against someone, but you can still get over. You know, it's just, okay, I understand the Heyman thing might have been unfortunate for him, but he got so much opportunity, got given the title... The problem is with that is that that title has been made worthless. And now with Owens having it, it's maybe worth something again. It's worthless when Curtis Axel goes against, you know, goes up against CM Punk and is booked to look dumb. And booked to look incompetent to be able to, you know, win anything. I mean, when they were booking him to beat Triple H in one of his first matches, I mean, that's... That's how you build the guy. But as soon as he went went up against CM Punk, as well as with Brock Lesnar there, you know, he he was made to be a, a, a jobber with a title. Yeah. yeah. So it's all and... writing. It's all writing that is the cause of Curtis Axel not getting over. Okay, now Bo Dallas. What is your justification My on God, Bo Dallas? Bo Dallas is, is he's a good wrestler. He's good on the mic. The character is great. You partner him up with New Day and he gets over. Yeah, okay. I think he's a bit overweight at the moment. Though. Yeah, he's a little he's chubby. Yeah, he did He did gain a little bit of weight. Maybe it's depression. I don't know. The only alternative I could have is if you actually repackaged him and not have him as a comedy act and he could go against his brother. Yeah. Or even partner up Bo with the Wyatt family. Yeah. But I like the idea of Bray being a lot smaller than the other guys. Yeah. I don't know if that would And have without worked, a beard. Though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, he doesn't look like he could grow one anyway. <laughs> he's, he's not in our elite level. All right, so I'll, I'll, um, I'll, I'll consider that my number three. So go ahead with your number three honorary mention. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I had Sasha Banks. Okay. Um, I, I think... They are saving her, um, and I think she just needs to be pushed really hard because I don't rate Charlotte. I never have really rated Charlotte. I rate Sasha Banks. I like Paige. I think Paige does well, yeah. and I think those two can go well. I think I think just because of the whole flair thing, I think Charlotte's got pushed a lot harder than she normally would have. I know she's a big girl and stuff, but like she's tall and broad and whatever. But yeah, I I, I think that. Sasha Banks and it'll probably be Sasha Banks Charlotte at WrestleMania you would think. Yeah, I I, um, I don't have any disagreement with Sasha Banks. Uh she was definitely in my list of the current WWE roster that should be given an opportunity. Dude, she's so over yeah. and she just needs to be given TV time. It was good to see her in a match this week. Um and just keep on going and slowly and slowly and then she can climb the mountain top and get there come Wrestlemania um, and it'll be she'll be a heel that everyone likes and a baby face that no one likes so yes does that make sense I don't know anyway yes what's your next honourable mention because you had two people in your first honourable mention Stardust Stardust yeah okay yep <laughs> I mean he's, he's a good wrestler he's great on the mic and uh, yeah I mean he's he's got everything and uh, for him to partner up with the Ascension who are worthless um, is is sad, you know. I I don't want to see him being stuck in mediocrity. He's definitely at a level that you can put him in the IC title race and him being legit. Oh man, I the only thing I've been thinking about with with him for a while is okay, he's fine as Stardust when Goldust isn't there, but now Goldust is back, and it just feels like gimmick stealing constantly. And I kind of miss Cody. The old Cody. He'll have to come back eventually. I don't disagree. But I'm fine with uh, him going to Stardust. And and, and Goldust, I th- yeah, I mean, yeah, they, they kind of did that together. But at the same time, uh, I don't even think about Goldust. I mean, Goldust is great as a veteran, as a good worker. But, yeah, Stardust for sure. Yeah, well, you can see the feud coming again because they didn't really get to finish it properly last time. So, because... Goldust got injured, and then that was the weird finish. Um, so, yeah. Look, I, I agree with it. I think Cody's a great worker. I um, remember when he had that nose guard on years ago. That was really funny. 
Um, and he was really good, but time will tell. Uh, for my next honourable mention, um, people needing the push or to maintain the push is Asuka. I think if she can push all the way to the top of NXT, you'll be looking right at the end of 2016-17, have her come to the main roster and be awesome because she's so physical and brings that new element to the women's wrestling that we've been craving, which is to treat them like you know, other other wrestlers rather than, oh, I saw my boyfriend. You know, I don't want to hear about that anymore. We want to see good matches. And the girl's good. She's insanely good. And they just need to push her to the moon because she'll take it. I no feel terrible. I did not include Asuka on my list, but she definitely belongs there. I, I, I completely agree. As far as bringing depth <laughs> and overall uniqueness to the divas division oh yeah you need to have asuka in that in that in that group so she wasn't in your list she's japanese so that's three we've got canada ireland and japan just saying you're not having a good day i might not have referred to (laughs) wwe.com as far as the roster listing i think i was looking at wikipedia and they or no, it wasn't even Wikipedia. It was like wrestling Wrestlingpedia or something like that. And they Ooh. might not have had, they might not have had her in that list. So what you're saying is you basically did an r truth. I, I, You've come out. I'm gonna blame you... the internet for this one that um, <laughs> she wasn't included. Okay, okay. I mean, they still had yeah. Solomon Crow on the roster, so I should have known. <laughs> Was Chris Benoit there? No, Hornswoggle was there too. And I'm pretty sure he's, yeah. he's probably gone. No, he, I think he got fired for weed. No, no, suspended. Ah, okay, suspended. There you go. But you, who's going to feud with El Torito? You know, that's the thing. They need a Hornswoggle. He has to be there. Um, Actually, yeah, so... I would love to see... And we don't have to go any further than this, but I'd love to see... El Torito versus Neville. Really? Really. You're ruining Neville, though. How is that ruining Neville? They're both... Neville's been going up against Mark Henry and winning. And then you put him against a tiny guy. And what, do you squash El Torito to, like, the squash of squashes? Or do you... How does anyone, apart from it being really funny... What else would it achieve? Well, you can't just pit El Torito against big guys. I mean, if you're going to make El Torito legit as a cruiserweight, <laughs> Neville is the perfect choice. <laughs> I think he's got a better time working with um, with Heath Slater, to be perfectly honest. I think I'd prefer to watch that. Yeah, and I, I do have to say I, I'm a little bit disappointed in myself that Heath Slater didn't make my list either. Well, he is the, you know, the man, the god, the music sensation. You know, I, I have nothing but respect for Heath Slater, even though this week was the first time he's been on TV in how long, I'd say, on Raw or SmackDown. I, I feel like been. Heath Slater is our generation's Tommy Dreamer. But no one here is good. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I mean, we really haven't been able to see him as a good quality wrestler. Not not since uh, when he first came up. I watched some of his matches he had. Um, I saw a match he had when he was in Australia at a house show. And it was um, him versus, I want to say, Great Carly. And he was awesome. Because he had to be, because the 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 chance of you can't wrestle to great Kali was definitely... Well, I mean, yeah, so. and Kali is going to make anyone else look amazing. I mean, Kali versus El Torito, and El Torito is your next champion. Well, there's there's the match you want. There's your dream match. <laughs> WrestleMania main event 2016. All right. Uh, another, another name I would throw <laughs> out there is, uh, you know... If you don't want to go in the direction of PTP, I would at least push Titus O'Neil because I do think he has it. I think he does have everything that that you want out of a superstar. 
Yeah, I, I agree. I just think because of his age, the risk of injury comes into it a bit. So, you know, he's 43. He hasn't been injured thus far. Because he hasn't been working that Well, much. working on TV doesn't necessarily s- suggest that he's not working on the road. Yeah, okay. Good point. Good point. But singles matches, he doesn't do much of. So, effectively, he's doing half the work. Just saying. Anyway, <laughs> moving... I'm just saying, I'm just throwing out facts. Yeah, you know, you can uh, take what that's you fine. want. That's uh, you're the host. Yeah. You can talk down to me. I don't care. I'm having a lot of fun <laughs> with it. I feel like you, 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 I've recruited you and you're, you're a well-acquainted jobber. It's going quite well. Um, all right, so for my last honorable mention um, for getting or continuing a push, I, uh, I went a trio of divas because I actually left out all the divas in my top five. So I, I went Becky Lynch. I think that the girl is being underutilized dramatically. Agreed. Uh, I mean, her her um, match against Sasha uh, in NXT was was phenomenal. It was way above anything that I was expecting. And yeah, for her to get the role that she's getting on the main roster right now is pathetic at best. Oh, it's really disappointing. I think her entrance is cool. She's. I think if they stop doing all those quirky, weird humor things just because she's a redhead. They get rid of that and they just treat her like a normal person and have her as a normal person character. You're not talking about cool. the puns, are you? Because those are. I'm talking about the. I'm talking about the puns. I'm talking about sitting at home watching two broke girls with a tub of ice cream. I'm talking about all that bad vignettes that she's done. They need to stop making her do them. How do you know so. they're making her do them? I mean, that could just be her. She's. <laughs> I mean, she's posted them on Instagram and stuff. It's. It, you know, it's it's a it's a it's a humor that I think I think Irish people get more than maybe you. Ripping into the Irish again? No, I like it, come, puns no, 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 are it's awesome. Okay, Garvin. I mean, like, puns, <laughs> puns, and I think Irish are pretty good at limericks too. Uh, you know, those are those are lost arts. So now you're just calling them all leprechauns, dude? No. <laughs> Don't read between no, the lines I, with me. I'm saying I do enjoy the puns. No, no. The Irish are great. We all love the Irish here. Um, yeah, no, I, I think um, she needs more more love. And maybe the puns are a work. I'm going to say I hope that's a work. Um, oh, a work you know, as in a rib against her? Or a work as in she needs work, work and this is her way of doing it? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, it's building her up as that personality, and so her social media folk, depending on who clears it, because I'm sure most things they post on Twitter and Facebook is cleared by WWE. So, um, and I'm fairly sure they'd be cracking down on it after Ric Flair went a little bit not that crazy about reacting to the what happened with the Paige Charlotte promo last week. So I apparently no wouldn't one's allowed necessarily to on. call podcasting a uh, social media. It, but it's a pretty big media. So perhaps they could crack down on that. I don't know. I, I just think they would protect all of their images on social media because they know the massive impact it has. Yeah. They wouldn't have such a Twitter influence like and say, you know, this guy tweeted this before his match today. They wouldn't be doing that unless it was all put like... Because they own their names, their, their, their Twitter accounts. They have rights to it all. So... I think that it's all... Yeah, like, I mean, they did a great like, job at protecting Seth Rollins' Twitter account, so, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> His girlfriend was a hoot. Um, anyway. All right, I think we better wrap this up. We've run pretty pretty late. Um, Isn't this, is this yeah, a two-hour podcast? <laughs> we can make it a two-hour <laughs> podcast. <laughs> This guy is so desperate to get out all of his lists. <laughs> He's worked hard. He's not leaving until he can get Did them out. Did we talk about Rusev no. yet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All right, I'm going to play this out. Yeah, look. <laughs> all right. Uh, so, this episode um, really has been brought to you by you guys. It's not by any sponsors. Like, we don't have to go through a rant of... 
all the different sponsors. We don't really want to do that here. We just want to keep us going and being able to afford to do it. Um, so yeah, head to fanstalkpodcast.com um, and you can pledge as little as a dollar a month. Um, that goes up. There's more access the more you donate up to $5 a month. Is that right, Carvin? Well, the top limit is $15 a month, which our great friend Kyle Petrano is the sole soldier at the front of the line. Legend. Yes. Thanks, buddy. Um, but yeah, look, it's it's worth just having a pledge. Like, a dollar a month isn't even a cup of coffee. Um you know, I'm going to be the guy who's going to be a little bit anti-American here, but you guys don't even have good coffee, and I'd love for you guys to buy us a coffee. So, um, look, head on over to the website, have a look, and I hope you enjoyed this podcast. Please join the conversation. Jump on Slack. If you do jump on Patreon, Garvin will send you an invite straight away to get on the Slack community, and then you guys get a say and an opportunity to jump on on this episode. We did have Stuart, who was looking at coming on to this episode um, unfortunately he was having some flight problems, uh, wasn't able to get back in time. So we'll hopefully have him on next month and I'll, and I'll see if I can convince Garvin to come back. He probably won't after this, um, or Nick or Joe to join us as well. Um, but we need a topic for the monthly five. Actually, no, we don't not for next month. And I think you might actually want to be in this one next month, Garvin. We're going to be doing the top five matches of 2015. I thought we were going to talk about Fastlane. No. when well, We will as oh. well. It's the two-segment show. It's just we couldn't do two segments this time. One, because you had 15 people. <laughs> and and two, it's too hard to predict right I now. See. So we will ha- we'll have a little bit more structure um, and see how we go. But yeah, top five matches of the year, um, which... I, I thought it would be predictable, but I don't think it will be if we do our homework right for this one. So make sure you tune into that one. Jump on the Slack community, guys. Have some input. We'd love to see your lists as well because we will mention them on the show as well. Um, and have a bit of fun with it and celebrate a year of great matches but horrible storylines. Uh, so for me, my name is Sean. And for Garvin, the host of everything apart from Fans Talk TNA, thank you for listening. Bye-bye.